The United States Army Corps of Engineers and the U.S. Department of Agriculture are working together to slaughter thousands of cormorants who live on East Sand Island off the coast of Washington State and Oregon. Shark was on the Columbia River for three weeks and documented the slaughter. You can watch our previous videos about this on the following links. The excuse the Army Corps has given for killing cormorants is that the native birds are eating salmon and that in order to save these protected fish, the birds must die. In this video, we will tear that fallacious argument to shreds and expose how cormorants are being slaughtered because of government failure, ineptitude, and scapegoating. According to the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service, quote, the colony at East Sand Island has remained relatively stable since 2004. Having a stable population for 12 years means that the cormorants are existing within the biological carrying capacity of East Sand Island. They are not overpopulated. The Army Corps owns and operates 12 of the 14 facilities that comprise the Federal Columbia River Power System. These dams are the true reason why salmon are being killed on the river. To expose just how devastating the Army Corps has been to salmon, Shark obtained the latest annual report of the survival rates of the different species of salmon that travel through the hydropower system from the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration, or NOAA. The following are NOAA estimated survival rates. The numbers are horrifying. The average survival rates through the hydropower system for all these species is a pitiful 35%. In other words, 65% of the salmon passing through the dams are being destroyed. If that wasn't bad enough, there's the issue of delayed mortality where salmon going through the system are harmed and less likely to survive in the long run. Not only are tens of millions of juvenile salmon being killed by the hydropower system every year, the damage these fish incur just passing through the dams may result in the death of untold others. On top of being cruel and wasteful, the Army Corps' killing of cormorants will do nothing to help salmon. In a U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service report that studied the predation of salmon by cormorants, which was obtained by Audubon Portland, the scientists discovered that killing cormorants, quote, are expected to have little to no effect on Snake River steelhead population productivity or the abundance of returning adults. Also, culling efforts are similarly unlikely to benefit the productivity of these other salmonid populations. The reason why the killing will have no effect is that the fish the cormorants eat would have been killed by other sources. Therefore, the number of salmon consumed by the birds does not add to the total number of salmon killed. Such an important scientific study which completely exonerates cormorants should not have been ignored by Army Corps, but it was because they are desperate to blame someone for their massive errors and violations, and cormorants were an easy target to scapegoat. In an article published on the Oregon Public Broadcasting website, it stated, quote, a U.S. District Judge recently rejected the federal government's strategy for protecting Columbia River salmon. Killing cormorants is part of that plan. He noted that reconsidering their options for protecting salmon could leave the agencies to the conclusion that they don't need to kill cormorants. Amy Eccles, a spokeswoman for the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers, says her agency is reviewing the court decision but doesn't currently plan to stop killing cormorants. The Army Corps continued to not only kill cormorants, but to destroy their nests. Just one week after the judge's decision, the Army Corps hit the cormorants' nests so hard that the entire colony collapsed. The Army Corps will try to evade responsibility, but here are the cold hard facts. The depredation permit issued to the Army Corps by the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service specifically states that up to, quote, 750 nests may be destroyed. The permit also says, 
active nest destroy 5,247 double crested cormorant. On Army Corps' own website, it states that they were destroying nests on the night of May 11, and that a quote significant disturbance occurred just two days later that caused the collapse. This is not coincidence, but causation. Let us be perfectly clear. The Army Corps' intent was to destroy the nests affecting more than 5,000 cormorants, and they admit they were destroying nests at the same time that a mass abandonment of nests occurred on the island. It is without question that Army Corps and their thugs for hire, USDA's Wildlife Services, are responsible for this travesty and they must be held accountable for this disaster. There are many stories of the Army Corps of Engineers being riddled with corruption and patronage, but the arrogance and spitefulness in the face of their own failure with salmon and cormorant is as stunning as it is disgusting. The Army Corps knew they didn't have to kill cormorants, but they didn't care. Because of that pompousness and their incompetence, the entire colony of cormorants has suffered catastrophic loss. The blood of thousands of innocent cormorants has been spilled into the Columbia River and their colony destroyed because the Army Corps deflected blame from itself for running a hydro system that kills millions of protected fish every year, while the native, stable population of cormorants ate only a fraction of that amount, just enough to survive.